Hi there, my friends. Today on Indian Story Read Along, we're going to do something a little bit different. Because YouTube has limits on how long something can be for certain accounts, I cannot make a video that is longer than 15 minutes. But I really want to tell you this story about Tanali Ramakrishna. He is one of the funniest, smartest characters that stories have ever been written about. And so we're going to do part one and part two. This story today is called Raman the Matchless Wit. It, we're going to cut off at a crucial point and then you'll have to join me again next time to see what happens at the end of the story. So let's get started. Raman the Matchless Wit. One day, a renowned scholar of Varanasi visited the court of Krishna Devaraya, the great king of Vijayanagara. He says, Maharaj, I challenge the scholars at your court to debate in any branch of knowledge of their choice. And the king says, the court would be honored to take up the challenge. But Panditraj, the learned court scholar, was far from feeling honored. Later, when they were alone, he says to the king, Maharaj, we dare not accept the challenge. I don't stand a chance. No scholar in the land does. And then the king says, do you mean to say there is no one here who can face him in a debate? And then, let's see. You do, Maharaj, said someone. I'll do it this very evening. It was Raman of Tanali, the king's favorite and Panditraj's despair. The king says, thank you, Raman, but scholarship is scholarship and wit, wit. I trust you know what you're taking on. Raman says, I do, Maharaj. And then Panditraj says, he doesn't. He'll shame us. Maharaj, we can't. The king says, Panditraj, have arrangements made for the debate this evening. Mm, that evening, one of our most learned scholars has accepted your challenge. Here he comes with his disciples. So then he comes in on a palkin. Look at that. Then Ali Raman is coming in. And then Panditraj is thinking, well, Raman, much as I dislike you, I'd hate to be in your shoes. And then Raman says, please place that bundle of manuscripts here. And then Raman says, shall we begin, O learned one? The scholar says, I'm ready. Which work have you chosen to debate on? And then he looks very serious and he says, let's begin with a simple one. I expect you are familiar with the Tilakashta Mahisha Bandana of, and the scholar is like, Tilakashta? Mahisha Bandana? Tilakashta? No, I'm not. And then he says, oh, I, I beg your pardon, O Pandit. I have never come across that work. So, and Raman says, what? Never come across it? That's surprising. And he says, what, even cowherds in our city are familiar with it. And the scholar says, if mere cowherds in this city know what I haven't even heard of, how much more intelligent this scholar must be. And he bows out and he says, I accept defeat, O learned one. Pardon my arrogance. There is much I have yet to learn. And the humble scholar left the court. And then the king is like, I am grateful to you, Raman. You have saved the reputation of our scholars. And then Panditraj says, I'm curious, what is this great work you spoke about? I must confess that I too haven't heard of it. Raman then uncovered his bundle. You would think that there's some kind of books or manuscripts in there, but let's see. He goes, these are the Tilakashta stalks of the sesame plant which I have tied together with a Mahisha Bandana, the rope with which buffaloes are tethered. Simple, isn't it? That's how all the cowherds know of it, huh, in the kingdom? And then the king is laughing, he's Panditraj, he has certainly shamed us, but not in the way you feared. Panditraj is mad though, look at him, he goes, the rogue, he had even me stumped. Panditraj, says the king, while I hold you in high esteem for your learning, you will agree that Raman's wit is matchless. And he says, undoubtedly, your majesty. As Raman walked away, though, and he goes, Dila Krishna Mahisha Bandana, indeed, I'll bide my time to have my revenge. He did not have to wait long. 
Later on, the king says, Panditraj, tomorrow is my mother's death anniversary. I feel sad when I think of her. And then Panditraj says, you shouldn't, Mahiraj. That's why, that which is born has to die. And the king says, ah, that I have accepted. I feel sad because I could not fulfill her last wish. And then Panditraj says, what was the wish a monarch could not fulfill? And then the king says, her cravings for mangoes. But it was not the mango season. No amount of gold could buy a mango. And then he thinks, mangoes, gold. Panditraj has a, an idea that is not very honest at all. And he goes, Maharaj, I'm sorry to say. And the king says, yes, speak up. Please don't hesitate. And he goes, your mother died with an unfulfilled wish. Her soul will remain restless unless, unless what? Unless you invite a few virtuous brahmanas and present each one of them with a golden mango. That's not honest at all. How does he know what was in his mother's mind? A golden mango? He's just trying to get his friends to get become rich. And the king says, why a few? Send out invitations to all the brahmanas. And Panditraj says, Here where I'll here's where I'll have my revenge. I won't send an invitation to that rogue, Danali Raman. Raman, however, could not resist watching this whole show. Ah, so the brahmanas will oblige the king and accept the golden mangoes for the sake of the late queen mother's soul. Well, well, after the brahmanas were fed and presented with the golden mangoes, they're all saying to the king, may God bless you. You need no longer feel sad when you think of your mother. Her soul is now at peace. And the king says, I am grateful to you for having accepted my invitation. But when the brahmanas came out of the palace, Tanali Raman is there and he says, Learned ones, today is my mother's death anniversary too. And she too died with an unfulfilled wish. As you know, her soul will be restless till a few virtuous brahmanas agree to. And then they think they're going to get rich again. And I go, oh, we understand, Raman, we'll come. And he goes, I am honored. They didn't even wait to see what he was going to say. And he says, this way, my friends. And then the Brahmanas are thinking, I wonder what gifts Raman is going to offer us. That's all they're concerned about. Raman took them to the backyard of his house. And he says, come, let me wash your feet before. And then they noticed the people in the background. They said, what, what are they doing? See those people back there? What, why are those rods being heated? said Panditraj. And Raman says, my mother died of rheumatism. Her last wish was to have her legs branded. <laughs> that means burned with a hot rod. But before I could get the irons ready, she died. Her soul will know no peace until, <laughs> these guys are now freaking out, <laughs> until I brand the legs of learned and deserving brahmanas. Shall we begin? You can't be serious. You are mad. I'm hurt. Don't you want my mother's soul to find peace? You did help the emperor, so I... Yes, Raman, but that was different. Here, you can keep these, but, but do try to understand. Look at Raman's face. He's like, oh, all right. What about my, my mother's last wish? <laughs> They're already out the door. It's a look at them scurrying away like a pack of rats. And then they're all on their way out and they go, a pity, what a pity we had to part with our mangoes. Let's complain to the king and have Raman punished. But when the king heard the story, he's thinking, thank you, Raman, for showing me what a gullible fool I was. And the king is able to laugh at himself. He goes, what a fool. <laughs> Panditraj says, this is no laughing matter, Maharaj. Men of learning have been insulted. And the king says, uh, yes, that's true. I hadn't looked at it that way. Raman should be punished. What do you suggest? He goes, let him pay for it with his head. And the king thinks, well, I'll humor him, for I can trust Raman to take care of himself. He hits the gong. Gong. And then the guards come in. And then he says, take Raman to the bank of the Tungabhadra, it's a river near where they are, and cut off his head with one sweep of your sword. And then Panditraj is happy, goes, rid of him at last. So then Raman just is all right. 
With one sweep of your sword, did you say? Well, if that's my fate, I guess I'll have to accept it like a man. On the banks of the Tungabhadra, the guards say, You're about to die, Raman. If you tell us your last wish, we'll try and fulfill it. And then he goes, Well, I want you to pray with me, for me. Please say you will. Of course we will, Raman. Everyone knows him and they like him. And then he goes, I want you to cut off my neck the moment I call out to Mother Kali. And then he says, well, we'll see what we can do. We'll see what that we do, Raman. And he goes, just a minute. Who will cut off his head, you or I? And then Raman says, both of you at the, at the same time. What is he up to? Both of us? Yeah, yes, if you miss, your friend will get me. If he misses, you'll get me. What's important is that I must die with the name of Mother Kali on my lips. And the guard says, we won't fail you, Raman. Shall we get ready? So he's, look at the position that they're all in over there, okay? And it goes, J Kali! And they take their swipe. But what happens? Well, where is he? I'd like to know. <laughs> he ducked into the water. It was right here, my friends. Went, Stand up, you rogue. We'll kill you without fail this time. And he said, what? Not now. Remember the king's orders. Cut off his head with one sweep of your sword. You'll have to go back and get his permission for a second try. <laughs> it's all right, all right. Let's go to the king then. So Raman was taken to the king. And Pandit Raj is like, what are you doing here? <laughs> the king says, why haven't you executed him? So then they're going to explain why. When the king was told why, well, Pandit Raj, what do you suggest now? And then he goes, let Raman be buried up to his neck and be trampled to death by an elephant. And then the king is like, go, do as he says. And now he's thinking, am I going to lose you, Raman? I can't see how you'll get out of this one. Do you think he's going to get out of this one? The guards took Raman to the outskirts of the city and began to dig the ground. At last, the pit was ready. And he goes, get in there and none of your tricks this time. And Raman says, my friends, I know when to accept defeat. And that's the end of part one of this story. Do you think Raman is going to get out alive? Why don't you email us at IndianStoryReadAlong at gmail.com, all one word, and make sure you get your parents' permission to email us. Next time you join us, we're going to have part two. We're going to pick up right, up right where we left off. All right? Thanks so much for joining us. And subscribe and click on notifications to find out when our next video is going to be up. All right? See you soon. Bye.